Hello folks, Florentine Santif here. Welcome to this King's Throne video, part 4 of the How to Correctly Build Hero series. Correctly building your heroes is one of the most crucial aspects of the game, and in order to do so, you must be aware of many things that this series will try to teach you. There's a lot to cover, but also a lot to learn for the newer players, so I hope you enjoy it and if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask on the comments section. In this long-awaited fourth part, we will discuss Paragons again, and take a look at the Enhancement feature. As you now know if you have watched the first episode of this series, Paragons are really important in this game and determine whether a hero is considered good or bad. This is because Paragon Bonus can hugely affect a hero's attributes. Paragon Bonus is calculated the following way, updated from the wrong formula I gave you in Episodes 2 and 3. You add Quality Bonus, Tomes Bonus and Bond Bonus of the considered attribute, and multiply it by the Paragon Percentage Bonus of that attribute. Here is an example of my Lamerick, my strongest hero at level 400 with maximum Paragons, which are 260% Paragon Bonus for Military and Fortune and 100% for provision and inspiration. For the military attribute, you can see that his paragon bonus equals 193 millions. By itself this paragon bonus is roughly 55% of his total attributes, and all paragon bonus represents 70% of this total. This is just crazy and that's why it is vital that you focus on getting those paragon tokens as soon as possible. In order to improve a hero's paragon, you will need to collect tokens of said hero and spend them on their paragon tab. For example, most Heroic Maidens will require 40 tokens to max their Paragons. Since you only need 10 tokens to unlock a Heroic Maiden in the first place, you can see that summoning her is the easy part, as maxing her Paragons will ask for 4 times the number of tokens needed to summon her. You will need to be patient but the attributes and kingdom power you will gain by doing so is well worth it. Also note that some heroes have what we call skin, a skin changes a hero's appearance and usually add another Paragon to work on further increasing his maximum potential. Most of the time this Paragon has 20 levels, and thus require as many tokens as the first two Paragons combined. Ever since I made the first episode of the series, a lot happened in the game and Goat introduced a fair number of new heroes. Most of what I said back then remain correct, but with the release of Japanese and Chinese Heroic Maidens, Elizabeth, Louise and Cersei are no longer top-tier Heroic Maidens. Diogen? Noheim and Kaiheim are now considered as the best Heroic Maidens with a 200% maximum Paragon bonus instead of 175%, and a crazy lineup of 7632 quality skills on their main attribute. As of today, the Inspiration Chinese Heroic Maiden has yet to be released but you can expect her in the near future. The good thing is that Japanese and Chinese Heroic Maiden tokens are somewhat open for grabs, so collecting them is definitely doable even if you stay on VIP 0 level and don't spend any money. I won't go any deeper and won't cover all heroes available but rather will give you the general guideline you should follow at all times. Try to avoid mediocre heroes with subpar paragons and focus on the strongest ones. You can't really go wrong if you build the following ones, Diokin, Elizabeth and Elise with skin for military, Noheim, Louise and Diana with skin for fortune, Kaiheim and Cersei for provision, and Purnell and Mulan for inspiration. Round table and legendary heroes are also good for military, especially early game, and if you want to consider a couple of event heroes to build, here is on screen a top 10 of the highest potential event heroes currently available. Finally, as far as all round heroes go, Sir Morian and Brynhilde with skins are the go-to choice. An important thing to consider when choosing which heroes to focus on is how available their tokens are. Some are easier to obtain than others, and it is always correct to build those heroes first rather than say Hans or other event heroes that only pop once every 6 months in limited supply. For example, the newly added Castle Siege feature has Mulan, Elizabeth and Brynhilde tokens always available for purchase. While you still won't be able to buy 50 of them in 2 days, having them available for something like 2 tokens a week is huge, making this feature very welcome. Another great source of tokens is Kingdom Expeditions on the Campaign tab. Doing your 10 battles a day will net you a free token every 2 or 3 days, since you get a token every 24 battles. This feature go as high as Chapter 351 as of today, and on the way you will grab 20 tokens of the following Maidens, Brunhilde, Elise, Jean, Diana and a couple of Mulan ones. 
The highest tiers of challenge progress rewards usually give a token as well, Mulan or Jinshio being the common ones. In addition, events of all sort always have tokens for turn-ins. Most of your gem's income should go into these events, in order to buy the tokens you need. I will cover these events in the near future and how you should most of the time avoid spending gems on most of them, but they are still great to attend. Even if you net only a token or two, that's still better than nothing. There are also a few regular events you should always enter and play, because the rewards are free and usually good. Picnic, Alchemy, Path of Wealth, Fortification and Siege, Alliance Championship are the main ones where you can get tokens without spending a dime, or even a gem. Finally, if you spend money on this game, there are a couple of deals that have great return on investment, token-wise. The first tier of special offers grant you 5 tokens for $1, and while you can't choose which one, this is still by far the best deal you can get for your dollar. It usually is available every 2 or 3 weeks and is something you shouldn't miss if you spend money on the game. The other good deal is the do-it-yourself Amber Store, available every 4 weeks, that allows you to buy one token for a dollar every day for 3 or 4 days. You can choose which token to get between 4 or 5, and while not as good as the special offers deal, it's still reasonable to get. Other than those first tiers you should usually stay away from the other offers, don't waste your money. To sum up, as long as you are active in the game, you have plenty of ways to get tokens and hero fragments, but patience is a virtue, it will take weeks or months to build a hero to full paragon, so don't get discouraged and keep playing. Maybe build a roadmap with heroes to focus on and tokens to grab in priority, plan your gem spending to push an event with tokens you need, and enjoy other activities if you have some spare time. A last note before moving to enhancement, unlocking paragons on strong heroes will be your main gain of kingdom power, so I advise you to do so only during kingdom power challenge or cross server challenge, in order to aim for the progress rewards and maybe a title. This only apply if your kingdom is big enough already, I would say something around 100 or 200 millions. Before that, it is best to unlock them right when you get them to keep building your kingdom and avoid hampering your progression. And now it's time to move on and cover the enhancement feature. Enhancing a hero means upgrading his frame and rewards a flat attributes bonus every time you do so. Every hero can be enhanced, and you will need either tokens or fragments for each level. There are 5 stages of enhancement, bronze, silver, gold, emerald and diamond. Each stage requires more materials than the previous one. A general rule of thumb is that enhancing to bronze requires 10 tokens for heroic maidens, and from 20 to 50 fragments for other heroes. After that, for heroic maidens, you will need 12 tokens for silver, 14 for gold, 17 for emerald and 21 for diamond. For other heroes, the number of fragments needed varies, depending on the quality of the hero. The flat attributes bonus also depends on the quality of the hero, which can be found on the hero's screen, it is represented by the number of stars on the hero. For example, Purnell is a 6 stars hero, round table and legendary heroes are 5 stars heroes, and weak ones like Don Juan or Magnus are 1 star heroes. Here is the complete sheet of attributes bonuses you get when you enhance a hero. Note that the bonus applies to every attributes. For example, upgrading a 6 stars hero from iron to bronze will give him 225k on every attribute, for a grand total of 900k overall attributes bonus. Enhancing a hero to bronze also has an hidden effect of upgrading his quality bonus by 15%. This only happens when enhancing to bronze, and do not happen when enhancing to the other ranks. Knowing that, you should immediately understand that enhancing a hero with a lot of quality to bronze is extremely valuable, more so than to any other rank. In fact, for your strongest heroes, this is almost mandatory as the benefit is so good. But while valuable, enhancing a hero to bronze is still in most cases worse than upgrading paragons. For example, take any heroic maiden that will need 10 tokens to enhance to bronze. Well, 10 tokens could also raise one of her paragons by 5 levels, and doing so is always the correct way to go. Thus enhancing an heroic maiden should only happen after having raised her paragons to max level, even for bronze status. The only exception to this rule is for legendary, round table and bogotter heroes, Upgrading them to bronze only costs 10 grails, 10 Excaliburs or 10 helmets, same prize as raising one level of their paragons. 
For them, it is better to bronze them first, then work on their paragons, then enhance them to silver and upwards. But this is the only case where it happens. Of course, on heroes with no paragons, well, enhancing is your only choice so you just do that. Other than that, there is not much to be said about enhancement as it's a pretty straightforward feature. Just keep in mind that enhancing to bronze has an hidden benefit of raising quality bonus by 15%, and that upgrading paragons is always better than enhancing, except for round table, legendary and bogotter heroes when upgrading to bronze. With that in mind, you're good to go. Also, after having maxed a hero's paragons and enhanced him to bronze, there is no more need to actively hunt for his tokens, you can move on to build other heroes. Enhancing grants good kingdom power boost, so try to do so while a kingdom power challenge is active for maximum benefits. And that wraps up the fourth part of this series. You should now be aware that upgrading paragons is key in the game, and the benefits of enhancing your heroes. In the next episode, which will be the last of the series, we will cover the remaining ways of building your heroes with maiden bonding, beasts, and equipment. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please leave a positive comment or click on the like button. Thank you for watching, and I hopefully will see you around next time. Bye bye.